telescope man. I promised you that uh, I would do a second little short review of this uh, bow thing, bow thing, new tri-power. <clears throat> I've already done one video of the unboxing. I've now got it all programmed up and uh, works just fine. I was able to hit a repeater oh, about 25, 28 miles from here uh, from inside my garage using 8 watts with this. I was never able to hit it with the my older 5 watt uh, handy talkie, a Wusong. Couldn't hit it. But with this one I was able to hit it real reliably, had good audio reports uh, from the folks on the repeater. So for me personally, it was well worth uh, buying this, 64 bucks. Uh, and the number on it is F8HP for high power. And you can buy them off of Amazon. They come directly from uh, Baofeng Tech, Baofeng Tech in Kentucky. And mine came uh, actually faster than what the little report, you know, you can look up online and track your package. Uh, it said it wasn't going to get here till Monday, but it actually showed up on, a, on the Friday before the Monday. So came rather fast. Uh, everything has worked fine with it. Haven't had a bit of problem. The only thing I would warn you about is it is 8 watts. And you know, the little mic uh, hole is right here, so if you're talking into it like this, you're awfully close to that antenna. So I would suggest that you make sure you have some kind of a microphone that can allow you to put this antenna further away from your body. Uh, it ships with some earbuds that have a little push to talk. So that would be sufficient. However, uh, just so you know, I have a, a Wusan, uh, I think it's UV3, that I bought a year or so ago. And at that time, I also bought the little uh, speaker mic for that Wusan. Well, guess what? It's got the exact same plug on it as this bow thing and it plugs right into here like so and now I can talk with the radio held away from me and I can hear also so a speaker mic uh, I think this came from Power Works Power Works I believe is where I bought it and I actually bought it for the Wusan not for the bow thing but they're interchangeable. Uh, also, you need to know that I didn't have to buy another programming cable either. Uh, you know, I guess the manufacturers are getting a little smarter. When I bought my Kenwood 281A uh, <coughs> a while back, I bought this programming cable for it. You know, it's got a uh, what is that, an RJ45 or something jack on it. Well, lo and behold, the same programming cable also has the uh, Wusan and the Baofeng connector on it. It's got two connectors. So I was just able to plug this into the uh, Baofeng and program it up using uh, free program Chirp. I did use the daily download of Chirp, uh, the latest version, which is called the daily download. I used that to program this up. Worked perfectly. In a minute, I'm going to show you uh, the Chirp program just to give you an idea of what that looks like uh, once you've got some frequencies programmed into it. We'll do that in a minute. But anyway, this goes right into here. And with that, you can program up this little handy talking. Now, you know, computers don't come with serial plugs anymore. So you're going to have to get yourself a uh, 
USB to serial adapter cable, and that's what this thing is. All right, and it does come with some uh, drivers, and this plugs into here, like that, and then this goes directly into the USB port on the computer. So with this uh, connection that I already had, uh, <laughs> been using it actually with my telescope, use the same cable <laughs> to program up my uh, go-to telescope, but it works just fine for doing radios too. Uh, but <clears throat> you're going to need, I'm sure there's probably a cable online that has the correct uh, radio connection and then on the other end has a USB plug. I believe I've seen those online so you may not need this uh, little extra thing. I just had a bunch of different cables and was able to uh, make the connection without actually buying any new programming cables or uh, microphones. So I was kind of lucky in that regard. Anyway, it has worked perfectly. I'm going to take you over. I'm going to stop the video now, take you over to the screen and up here and do a little screen capture and discuss just a little bit the CHIRP program. All so right, so we're uh, back uh, over to the screen. Let me kind of get this out of the way a little bit. And we'll open up CHIRP. This is a free software package that you can download, uh, C-H-I-R-P, Chirp, C-H-I-R-P. Of course, when you open it up, this is what you get. You get nothing. And the very first thing that uh, you need to do is to go up here where it says radio, and you need to download uh, from the radio. Yes, I know the radio is completely empty right now. It really doesn't contain anything. But that's the first step because that lets Chirp know what the file needs to look like for that particular radio. This software works with a myriad number of uh, radios. So it's got to know uh, the type of file that that radio needs. So the first thing you do is uh, connect it all up. With your cables, uh, turn the radio on after you've connected the cables. Come up here and download from the radio. At that point, you're going to get uh, what looks like a spreadsheet. So let me open up the one that I already have. And you notice it's an image file. It's a picture. Uh, it's not uh, some strange uh, thing. It's just a simple picture file. So let's open it up. Now this is something I've already saved already uh, after I programmed the radio. It's very straightforward. Uh, you simply enter, for repeaters anyway, you simply enter the uh, uh, frequency of the repeater. You can put a name in there. You can see I have green typed in there for uh, the Greenville repeater. This is kind of confusing. Uh, this confused me. This third column confused me a little bit. Uh, if you click a particular column, you're going to get a, a little button that allows you to change whatever's there. See? So when I first did this, uh, you know, I saw Tone Squelch, T-S-Q-L. Well, that's not really what you need for repeaters, okay? That's a Tone Squelch. You won't open up uh, your radio uh, if you select that for a normal repeater. What you need to select is just simply the word Tone. Tone. Other than that, and, uh, you know, it was real straightforward. Of course, you got to put the PL tone over here in this column, right here. All right, and again, if you click it, you can select from various kinds of P, uh, numbered uh, PL tones, all right? So uh, you can make these columns bigger. Let me make that one bigger. There you go. Now you can see them. You can select the correct PL tone for that repeater. 
that's really all you need to do. You might want to come over here on this side and you know make sure it says FM and make sure it uh, you do want it on high power, which is what I selected. This little S that you see here uh, indicates that if I do a scan uh, by price pressing the star key on the bow phone, uh, you press it, it'll start up a scan. It will skip this channel during the scan. And you can select any channels that you want to skip. You just click there and click the skip and put in, you, you know, the letter S right here. And then it would skip that channel whenever you scanned. The only one I'm skipping right now, and I hate to say it, is Garland. And the only reason I am skipping Garland on a scan is uh, I've got some electrical noise that I cannot isolate and it trips the squelch for that particular frequency so uh, it doesn't really affect me when I'm trying to transmit but during a scan it will scan on down until it comes to Garland and it'll stop because it hears this noise that I have locally so I chose to skip the Garland repeater uh, using that S. Okay, Garland. That's the one I chose to skip. And the other neat feature of this software is that once you put them in here, you can move them around uh, and uh, put them in the order that you want. And that's very simple to do. You just click Edit, Move Up, Move Down. So. Uh, if I wanted to move this one someplace else, this uh, fire department frequency, I would uh, go up here to edit and say move down, and it would move it down to uh, the 14th memory position from the 13th. Or I could move it back where it belongs, up in the 13th. So as you're entering these, uh, you really don't have to think about what kind of order you're doing it in. Just enter them, and then when you get done, you can uh, move them around into the particular order that you want them to be in. Very handy uh, little free software. It does program up the uh, public service frequencies. Again, you got to use the DTCS tone number which for uh, my two for example my two EMS uh, frequencies that I want to monitor uh, one of them happens, happens to be a 143 uh, DTCS and the other one is a 346 and of course you can put those in there and then be able to monitor those public service uh, frequencies anyway a great little program worked fine don't forget to file, save before you close it or all your work will be lost. And uh, then from then on, uh, if you want to play with it, all you have to do is a file open and find the, uh, the file that you saved and opened it and you'll get it back just like this. So uh, your frequencies are saved and they can be adjusted. Now, when you want to alter something or change something in the radio, and you've already done this, you already have a file, uh, all you have to do is connect up the radio, turn it on, and go over here to Radio, Upload to Radio, Upload, and it'll send all this data to the radio. As a uh, common practice, once it's finished, uh, I do this with uh, any radio that I'm programming, I always turn off the radio, unplug the cables, and then turn the radio back on. Just to give it a complete reboot. I don't want to plug and unplug cables while the radio is turned on. I want to make sure it's off, and then I plug in my cables, and then I turn it off, and I unplug my cables. 
and that also kind of reboots the radio because a lot of these new radios, uh, of course, have uh, CPU computer chips in them. And when you reboot them, it just uh, brings up everything brand new along with the data, which this is, uh, that's stored in the radio. So with that said, as I always do, I wish you clear skies. And remember to keep looking up to see the greatest show on earth right over your head every single night. Oh, yeah, it's still up there. Everybody have a great day. 73 and clear skies all around. And see you all later.